So when you want to start a self-sustainable project like this, you need water as the first most important element. You need water for yourself, your animals, your plants, and of course, for fun. <laughs> there you have it. And we're lucky to have this beautiful river stream here, which is really the gold vein of the land, I would say. Because without this river, we could do a very limited amount of things that we are actually doing right now. The second way we get our water for our domestic purposes is through this borehole. A professional person came in and doused for this water and he was able to pinpoint and be sensitive enough to notice this water stream 105 meters below the surface. We dug down and we found two water lines, one at 105 meters and one at 75 meters, which is constantly supplying water for our domestic purposes. So the third way we obtain water is through harvesting our rainwater. We take all the water that falls off these roofs and the terraces, collect it and channel it to this nearby pond that can hold around a million liters of water. Now there's not much in it now because we had a dry winter cycle, but it still has sort of a 300,000 liter backup water in case we need it. Element two of sustainability is food. Now if you want to grow your own food, of course you need fertile land. Thank God here at Vidapura we have four hectares of agricultural land, totally biological, hasn't been touched yet because we don't need it yet. And why we don't need it? Because we have this beautiful vegetable and fruit garden for us to enjoy every day under the Portuguese sun, straight from the plant with all the chi and the power still in it. No transportation, no packaging, live food. Doesn't get any better than this. So now that we've covered element one, water, and element two, food, we come to a very essential element. Number three is shelter. Now, shelter would be a bit of an understatement because we really pimped this shelter quite a lot. But we have our own structures. We have villas, we have workshops, receptions, apartments, and our own houses. Now, when you build shelter, you need to think about humans, but also your animals. Your animals are very important in your self-sustainable lifestyle because they help you with your self-sustainable lifestyle. So we had to build shelter for the dogs, the cats, the donkeys, and all the other animals. And also, of course, we built some amazing shelter for humans. Now, when you build shelter, you can make all types of choices. Us, we, in this case, we chose a very ecological way of building. We use lots of natural building materials and locally sourced materials such as straw, clay, hemp and rammed earth. So element four in self-sustainability is energy. And energy we get through sun and through wind. Now every structure, every setup here has its own different system and is totally off the grid. In the winter when there's less sun we have our wind generator to back us up and if that fails or is not enough we have um, the grid connection which is a silent and 65% green energy solution. And it also enables us to give back energy to the grid because we overproduce during the sunny days. And all in all, we're operating more than 100% CO2 neutral. You need warmth for warm water, you need warmth to heat the house. Now, here we do this with sun energy again. So these four panels are not electric panels, they're water panels. They collect the heat from the sun and transfer it to the building where it's being stored in a water tank. Furthermore, it can circulate through the walls, which gives heating to the house, together with passive solar heating that goes through the windows. Now, in case there's not enough sun, we in this place use wood as a backup, so there's no gas involved, just a nice little fireplace, which is also cozy at the same time. And all that warm water that is produced by the thermic panels gets stored in these big tanks. And this is a separate tank that stores surplus solar energy. So when you need the sun in the night, it is represented in this tank. You put your heating on and water starts flowing through the walls and that's how we keep ourselves toasty and warm. Okay, we came to element number five, waste management and links to your local uh, community. We recycle as much as possible. We recycle glass, paper and cardboard, plastic and metal, and we have a bin for indifferential waste, which doesn't fill up as much as you recycle. Now, we compost everything. We compost our vegetable cuttings, we compost our animal leftovers, and we compost human leftovers, believe it or not. I don't know if I should say that, should I? It's the compost toilet. We actually use that shit. 
Oh shit. <laughs> so the second thing you have to think about in your waste management is of course what to do with all the dirty water that comes out of all the houses. We have three, four structures here all draining into this system. Here we collect or grey and black water. It goes through a biological filter, through this reed bed system which is the second biological filter and believe it or not but the outcomes without any effort at all, 98% cleaner water than it went in. That leftover water we drain slowly into the valley, nurturing the trees that grow nearby. Without a drop of water leaving this place. And another good example of waste management is this beautiful structure. It's called a compost toilet. And this is a toilet that doesn't involve any use of water. So it's a dry composting toilet. You do your thing and basically what you're doing is you're giving it back to the soil. Okay, in the last element number five I said links to the local community. A common misperception in self-sustainable thinking is that you have to sustain yourself and thus do everything yourself. And it's far from that. It's working very close to your neighbors, asking for know-how, sharing knowledge with the local community. That way everybody gets to do what they're good in and you can trade things that you're good in to the things that they're good in or the products that they have. So it also creates a codependency, which is a very healthy thing for human beings. I guess that sums it up. This was self-sustainability in five elements.